chapter 2 part 1 video, we briefly talk about probability distribution for continuous random variables. In this video, we are going to review specifically the normal distribution and the standard normal distribution for continuous random variables, including how to do certain probability calculations necessary for future chapters. Let's start with the notation. Suppose a random variable x has a normal distribution, whose mean is mu x and variance is sigma squared x. Then we write or simply and x is a bell-shaped density function and mu is the center of the distribution. For example, if x is distributed normally with mean 16 and variance 25, it will be the notation. Furthermore, we'll have 16 at the center. The standard normal distribution is a special case of the normal distribution with mean 0 and variance 1. A random variable who has the standard normal distribution is usually denoted by z. Let me write it here to underscore that the horizontal line has the values of the random variable. Then we write one more notation. The probability that capital Z is less than or equal to lowercase z is the area to the left of z on the horizontal line. Suppose z is a negative number and it's here. The area to the left of lowercase z is the probability that z is less than or equal to lowercase z, which is denoted by phi of z. Phi of z is the cumulative standard normal distribution function. We can use the table of cumulative standard normal distribution to calculate the cumulative function at certain z. Let's have an example. What's the probability that capital Z is less than or equal to negative 2.14? Here we are looking for the area to the left of negative 2.14 on the horizontal line. The area is given by phi of negative 2.14. I will use the following table of cumulative standard normal distribution. Let me copy the question here. We're looking for, since we are calculating phi of negative 2.14, the value of lowercase c is negative 2.14, and we'll see negative 2.1 in the z column here. The second decimal value of z is given in this row. Find 4. 0 0.0162 is the function value. We have found the area to the left of negative 2.14, or the probability that z is less than negative 2.14. Let's have a couple more examples. What's the probability that z is greater than 2.14? If the question was greater than or equal to, we would have the same answer. To answer the question, we can use the fact that normal distribution is symmetric at the center. Let me locate 2.14 on the horizontal line. Since this curve is symmetric at the center, the area in the left tail to the left of negative 2.14 is equal to the area in the right tail, the area to the right of 2.14. Therefore, the answer is 0 0.0162. Another question, what's the probability that z is less than or equal to 2.14? You can definitely use a table, since the table gives the area to the left, and here we are looking for the area to the left of 2.14. Instead of using the table, we can use the fact that total area is 1 and we have the area in the right tail. The green probability is asking the area all the way to the left of 2.14. Therefore, it will be 1 minus the area in the right tail. Let's have a more interesting example. Suppose x is normally distributed with mean 16 and variance 25. Find the probability that x is less than or equal to 17.5. x is a normal distribution with mean 16, but not standard normal distribution, because the mean is 16, not 0, and variance is 25, not 1. But we can transform x into a random variable with mean 0 and variance 1 by subtracting its mean and then dividing this difference by its standard deviation. After standardizing x, we can use a table of cumulative standard normal distribution because the standardized version of x will have mean 0 and variance 1. We are looking for the probability that x is less than or equal to 17.5. 
In other words, the area to the left of 17.5 under the curve. What's the standardized version of 17.5? The mu of x is 16 and variance is 25, therefore the standard deviation is 5 as a square root of 25, transforming 17.5 to z minus mu of x 16 divided by standard deviation of x 5. Now we can use the table of probabilities since we have a standard normal distribution. C is 0.3. The second decimal value is 0. Therefore, the probability we are looking for is 0.6179. When you use the table, you see all the probabilities have four digits after the decimal point. For any reason, if you need more digits after the decimal point, you might need an alternative way of calculating the probability. By using the table of cumulative standard normal distribution, we found the probability, but we could use this Excel function as well who has four arguments. The first argument is the value of the variable, which is 0.3, comma. Z has standard normal distribution, so mean is zero. The third argument in the function is standard deviation. The standard deviation of the distribution is one, since variance is one. The last argument would be the word true, since we want to calculate the cumulative probability. If we were calculating the probability density, we would use the word false. Then we get 0.61791142. So number of digits after the decimal point is not restricted to 4. If we round, we get what we got by using the table. Why don't you use this Excel function with the distribution of x to answer the original question? Then the first argument will be 17.5, comma, the mean. The mean of x is 16, comma. The third argument is the standard deviation. Standard deviation of x is the square root of variance, which is 5, and type true. Tell me what you get. Thank mm -hmm. you.